So I'm recording the session and today is going to be our last session already. And as I promised, we are going to deal with a few example questions that you can actually get on the exam. Ah, there's fireworks here already. I'm not sure if you can hear that too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I prepared four questions. And they're very much like questions that you could actually get on the exam, except that I didn't make multiple choice answers. So they're open-ended questions. Well, actually, they're not really open-ended. They're pretty much just no questions. So two options. But clearly, I would like to hear from you why the answer would be yes or no. On the exam, they really expect you to be uh, able to think like a compiler. So if you've been doing Java development for quite some time already, don't think that you don't need to prepare for this exam because it's really something else. Um, I already mentioned it last week. I really love to prepare with a tool named Entware, this one. And they have really good mock exams. So the questions that you'll get on here, they're really like questions you'll get in the exam, but slightly more difficult. So if you start passing these, you are definitely ready for the exam. They even offer a money back guarantee. Uh, I, I don't know anyone who used this, but they offer a money back guarantee. So if you passed or a test, but you filled the real exam, you can get your money back. That's how confident they are that they are a good uh, preparation for the exam. Um, what I especially like about this tool is that you can really mimic the exam. So you can say, I want to show the number of correct options, which isn't in the, the book that I recommended, um, this book. It's a great book, but it doesn't show the number of correct options under the questions. And that clearly um, changes your odds of getting the question right by a lot. And in the real exam, they do give you the number of correct options. They don't check for it. So you are responsible yourself for making sure that you select the, the uh, right number of right answers. So as to say, select two, you only select one. They're not going to give you a warning before moving on to the next question. So really make sure that you do check that because these are e uh, easy points to not lose at least. Um, so, yes, I would really recommend this tool. Um, and what you'll get are questions like this. I only um, made four questions, so there's many topics left uncovered, but these are all things we have seen in the course, yet there are many topics that are left uncovered. So the first one, guys, the question is, um, will this compile? And also, why will this or won't this compile? Please have a look. <laughs> Any clue? I think it won't compile because uh, because of the the long uh, number is uh, uh, yeah eighty nine. Mm, yes, I, I think, think that syntax is incorrect. I think that's still fine. It can auto. Um, promote it to a long, I guess, because yes, it does see it as an int. Um, oh, come on. But the problem here um, is this one. So it won't compile, but the problem oh, is that you cannot use a long for a switch. Not a boolean. Yeah, okay. What did you say, Arnold? Oh, not a, not a long. Okay, sorry. No. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So even though the, there's no L here, it, it knows this is a long, so this is fine. Um, but you cannot put a long into a switch. You can only do okay. int and everything smaller than int. And also no double, no floats, uh, string and enum. And I think these are your options and that's it. Um, yes, so this can all go on a switch. You can use byte, we'll still go in a switch. So all these things, they can go in a switch, but long, unfortunately, it cannot. I think it makes sense though, because if it's um, too big for an int, it's definitely too big for a switch, right? Because you'll yeah, have a whole bunch of, actually I think int wouldn't really even be necessary, but we use int a lot, so it kind of makes sense. All right, let's do another one. 
will this compile? Uh, no, it won't. Tell me why. In the class uh, Q2, two missing the uh, constructor uh, with one parameter. Uh. Yes. So what's going on here? All right, let me just go to the code. It makes it easier to see, perhaps. So what's going on here is that this constructor um, is added. It's a custom constructor. And that means that there's no longer a default constructor. And if you remember the default constructor, it looked something like uh, this. And the compiler was all, only adding this for us when we don't specify our own constructor ourselves. So when we do specify a constructor, there's no longer a default constructor. Um, and what this default constructor also always does is this, calling the super, um, so the default constructor of the parent. So our class, Q2 over here, it doesn't have a constructor. So it has a default constructor. And the default constructor looks something like uh, this. Um, like this. But this super is not specifying any argument. So if that one is not in there, this won't work. So the class won't compile because the automated um, or the, the automatic constructor that's being added default constructor, it can't find a default constructor in the parent. So it needs a custom constructor as well over here, or you add the um, no param uh, constructor in the something class. That's also possible. So let's just get rid of this to restore the question. Do you guys get that? Well, Leon did, because he answered correctly. Yeah. I didn't know it, but yes, I understand. <laughs> ah, good. All right, let's try another one. What does this print? And on the exam, you'll get options like um, A, it won't compile, B, true, true, C, false, false, D, true, false, E, false, true, or F, none of these, something like that. Uh, I know it, but I'm not sure if I'm. Uh, I should answer the question, but <laughs> do you know it, Arno? I would say true, false, but not sure. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Can you explain it a bit? Well, yeah, the first line says is uh, s one equals to s two, and that's same value, so it says yes. Um, and the second line, S2, is, yeah, hello, but S3 is creating a new string, new object with a value hello. Yes. And different. So what Java is doing, it is having a string pool. And when you just create a string like this, it's being efficient, and it's going to have a look at the string pool. And the string pool is some sort of collection space in memory where all the existing strings are. And if possible, Java will reuse um, a string from the string pool because there's no risk to this. Strings are immutable. So it can't have the problem that it's going to refer to some sort of object and that then someone else comes and changes it. It's going to happen because it's immutable. So this string pool is containing hello here already. So the object reference that this S1 is pointing to is the same as this one because they're just pointing to the same hello object. But if you create a string explicitly with new string, it's going to create a new object. And then the object reference is different. And what you're doing when you're comparing using the uh, double equal sign, you're looking at the object reference and not at the content. So this is actually an extremely poor way of comparing strings. Normally, you would say s1 dot equals s2 and s2 dot equals s3. But this is definitely one question yeah, I really think that you'll get one of these when you're going to take the exam because they want you to know about the string pool and um, they also want you to know about uh, the way this equal equal sign is working. So you'll definitely get a question uh, like this. 
but answered correctly. So uh, <laughs> you got the points for this question. Let's have a look at this one. Um, what is Compile? Say yes, but oh no, okay, yeah. It's it's missing the the tro the throws definition in the in the method. Uh. Yes. So either this needs to be surrounded by a try catch, yeah. or it has to specify um, whatever exceptions it can be throwing up there. Yeah. So we had two types of um, exceptions. We had the um, checked exceptions, and we had the unchecked exceptions, and anything that extended from exception was a checked exception, except for anything that's extending from runtime exception, because runtime exception, this exception is actually extending exception itself as well. Um, but runtime exception uh, is an unchecked exception. So if we go here, um, let's just go up. You can see it still extends exception, but it's different because all the childs of our um, uh, or runtime exception class over here, they're runtime exception, they are unchecked. So they don't need to be declared um, or handled on the spot. Usually because runtime exceptions, they come from poor coding. Whereas the checked exceptions, they usually come from something that you are not really um, in control of. So for example, with IO, we have these checked exceptions we need to deal with because we are depending on the file system and availability of files, for example. It's not always that black and white, unfortunately. It's very often a gray area and you're not sure whether it's used to check or unchecked exception. <laughs> but in, in these cases, it's easy. So whenever you have a checked exception, the compiler sees that this is an exception and it has to be handled. So don't um, be fooled. Don't say that because you'll probably get something like what's going to happen here. And then it can be something like um, this will uh, throw um, compile error or this will throw an exception at runtime. These are all answers that you'll get. So you need to be very sure that you know exactly what it's going to do. Because even when you know, okay, this is not going to work, but you don't know exactly how it's not going to work, you can still answer the question wrong, even though in real day-to-day -day coding, you would be fine working your way around this. So it's really important that you're able to think like a Java compiler in order to pass the exam. Oh, let's just do one more. So I just thought of a fun one I saw this week. Let's just do one more. Um, oh yeah, let's call it Q5 because it's our fifth question. Uh, I, I think if you want to uh, answer the uh, questions about exceptions correctly, you just have to practice a lot with it. Uh, uh, yeah. Because it's, it's pretty easy to uh, uh, get a question with a runtime exception, and then uh, you uh, the chance that you're doing it wrong uh, will be pretty high. Uh. Yes, and just go over there. Somewhere in the book, there's a table with some exceptions that you need to know for the exam. And if you keep in mind that uh, unchecked exceptions, they come from poor coding, and checked exceptions, they come from external dependencies, you can sort of memorize easily which one is checked, which one is unchecked. Um, so that you know how to respond to a question, because clearly you might know that runtime exception um, is unchecked, but you need to know by heart that array index out of bounds is also unchecked. And you need to know that IO exception and file not found exception, that they are checked. So in order to answer this question correctly, you also need to memorize a few things, yeah. unfortunately. But this is something not related. I just thought of it because it was so nice and mean. I wanted to ask you what this is going to be doing. Um, so let's make an array of uh, chars in here. Mm -hmm. oh. There we go. And in here, I'm going to make a for each loop. So I'm going to say for every char in our chars array, 
I want to do this. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, ugh, okay, because I have some issues typing apparently. There we go. And then here I'm going to print as, what will this do? I already gave a bit of a spoiler saying that this was really mean. <laughs> Anyone dares to give an answer to this? I think you cannot do a concatenation on a null uh, a null value. Um, so you'd go for runtime exception then? Yeah, I think so. You but are I'm not, not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> I think a null time except a runtime exception would have been better, but it's going to do something else. <laughs> okay. I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> okay. No, I don't know. <laughs> there we go. Look at this. Uh, it will make us. Ah, uh, of course. Yeah. It's no, going, no. It's just going to look at uh, null as if it was a string, and then just append to that. Uh. It's terrible. <laughs> But indeed, if you would have said something like um, this, I don't know if um, as like this or something, what would have happened then? Yeah, then my answer was correct. Yes, you, then your yeah. answer was correct because yeah. then it gets a null pointer on the S. Yeah, but since it's a, it's a concatenation, uh, 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 it will automatically... Uh, uh, Think it's a string. Yeah, it's, it, 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 converts, it, it sees it as a string because it's a concatenation. Yeah, I think this will fail as well, though, if I do this, because I almost did this. It's, oh, no, wait, it's probably going to fail. Um, and that, that will fail because then uh, yeah. you get a... Because then again, you're getting no points there. Um, yeah. Let's just get rid of this. Okay, this is terribly formatted, but you get the points. But if you do the plus equals, it, it's going to make no what. That's super funny, I think. Uh, it just depends what you think is funny. But... Oh. Basically, basically mm -hmm. it's, no. it's, a, it's a bug in the GDK. I'm not sure if they ever thought of this as a feature, but <laughs> I, I I can't see why or what's the point. It's funny. Let's just keep, let's just stick to that. It. It's funny. Mm. But you need to know all these little fun facts. And I think the only way to, um, well, actually to just do it was just to enjoy the process of learning all these weird fun facts about Java. And this tool that I just showed you, it's really helping to. Uh, get the hang of all the questions that you might get. And you might even see some questions that are very much alike. So you have some uh, some easy questions in the exam. Yeah. Do you guys have any questions? Not at this moment, no. <laughs> no, not really. No? Um, well, in that case, you can better uh, have a look at all the practice questions that you can do. Look at, have a look at the questions in the book or maybe use the tool online that I showed you. And this will definitely get you ready for the exam. And if you have any questions in the meantime, you can uh, post them under the video and I can uh, make some additions uh, to answer these questions as well. Yes? Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, that was it. Three months of That's Java. Oh. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> yes, yeah. you're very welcome. Yeah. I hope you had as much fun as I did. Yeah. Well, look at the YouTube videos. <laughs>